clients, uh, either one-to-one -one or to uh, larger audiences, how we present ourselves online right now has suddenly become very important. Carol and I were saying earlier, you know, this is probably an acceleration of what was going to come anyway, but we ignore the importance of how we present ourselves online at our peril. So we've got to get it right now. We've got to learn how to connect with our audience, get our message right, uh, and to strengthen our online image. And we'll do it with LinkedIn this evening. This is many other platforms, but we're going to dedicate this to LinkedIn. So let me introduce you to this gentleman, Ernest Prudence. Uh, he was an entrepreneur. He was an expert at his, uh, in his field. He was a very, very keen golfer, and he loved networking. Um, if he was on LinkedIn today, his profile would say that he was the managing director and founder of the new Pelopone engine company in Leeds. Ernest was an engineer. In fact, he was an engineer of considerable global repute. Um, he invented some things that we are all very, very familiar with. He invented the dimmer switch. Uh, he invented hydraulics. And bless him, he invented the dishwasher. Don't we now love Ernest Prudence? Um, he also used to network with some other pretty well-known engineers around the world. Uh, his next door neighbor and best friend for quite a few years was the gentleman on the left. Anybody recognize him? Sir Barnes Wallace, inventor of the bouncing bomb. Um, on the right, one of his earlier engineering friends is John Logie Baird, the person who was widely credited with inventing television. Um, and Ernest Prudence was one of the handful of small engineers that was actually in the same room when Logie Baird first presented television to the world. Ernest Prudence was my grandfather. And um, although he was an expert, a technical expert, one of his mottos throughout life was something we all know, something we've all heard, this concept of people by people. Going back to um, Barnes-Wallace, I said he lived next door to Barnes-Wallace in Effingham, uh, in Surrey. And my mum tells a story when she was a little girl of when Barnes and her dad were chatting in the garden one summer's evening, much like this evening. And Barnes Wallace had in his garden quite a large pond. It wasn't quite a lake, but it was a large pond. And my mum tells a story she distinctly remembers uh, Barnes Wallace bending down, picking up a stone from the ground and skimming it across the pond. Um, and as engineers, they discussed that was how the, the, the bouncing bomb first started out. So we had this, gent this amazing gentleman in our family. I never met him. He died uh, before I was born uh, in about 1956. Um, but he was a genius of a man. Um, and he would have loved a platform like LinkedIn had it been around. Now, we'll come back to, to, to Ernest later. We have to look at how the internet is being used today and ask the question, how do professional service providers attract new business? Well, we all know that it's, it's done in a variety of different ways. But for most people in professional services, it's predominantly being done over the years through referrals. You know, you do a great job with a client. It is inevitable that someone will recommend you. Uh, you're at a dinner party or you're in a bar and someone says, you know, I, I need somebody to, to help me with a legal matter or an accountancy matter or an HR matter, something like that. And somebody around the table says, well, you want to check out my friend so-and-so. And you would write down their name on the napkin and the next day, what would you do? You'd phone them up. These days, now that we have the internet, something gets in the way of that phone call. Um, the same conversation happens. A recommendation is made. And we write down the name on the napkin, but the next day we don't necessarily phone them up. We tend to go onto the internet, we go onto Google, we go onto LinkedIn, maybe we go onto Facebook, we go onto a variety of different areas, and we we want to check out the recommendation. But while we're on Google, while we're on LinkedIn, we tend to get distracted uh, from the task in hand. And it may well be that whilst we're looking for John Smith or Sue Jones, who we've been referred to, we actually might see some other similar professionals 
So we think, oh, maybe we need to look at their website as well. Maybe we need to check out their LinkedIn profile as well. And it may well be that the person we were recommended to speak to doesn't actually end up getting our business or our referral. In fact, it can often happen that we don't actually end up talking to another human being. We'll actually find the information we want, the services we want, maybe on a blog, on a YouTube channel or a podcast. So the traditional referral route is being disrupted by the internet. So a good thing we ought to be trying to do is to actually make sure that we are part of that disruption, that we are found um, traditionally. Now, how we market our businesses and our services today, we have so many different options, it's, it's ridiculous. And many marketing people will tell you that this, what you can see in front of you is, is how we should do it. We should have a YouTube channel. We should have a podcast. We should have our own membership group, a Facebook group, have our own online courses, an email newsletter, maybe using artificial intelligence, Twitter, all these things put on our own events. And it's all quite exhausting. And whilst some of this is fine i think there is a place for putting some of our expertise out onto selective platforms the idea that we should be putting content as it's always described out there everywhere all of the time in my view just simply is unsustainable in today's world it's, it's just, it, you're just adding to the noise that's out there and we all know this about social media and the internet it is a wall of noise and filtering through it to find what we want or to get our message out to the right people at the right time is actually getting harder so i would say that some elements of this are are fine as part of an internet strategy but the rest of it simply isn't sustainable over the long term now one of the questions i get asked time and time again from a variety of different businesses and I, let's take financial advisors. I do a lot with financial advisors. Um, and they'll say to me, Phil, I see that Jones and Co down the road, they're using YouTube. Maybe we should give that a go. And so and so down the road, they're using Twitter. Maybe we'll give that a go as well. And somebody else I've seen down the road, they've got a Facebook group. Maybe we should give that a go as well. And I, I get the question. I understand why there's so much choice. But guess what? Give that a go is not a strategy. Tweet and hope may be a plan, but it's never going to be sustainable. And we get far, far too wrapped up in the technology of communication. And what we tend to forget that what is far more important is not the technology. It's all about the technique, how you do it. Remembering that wonderful concept that people buy people. The technology is right is there to facilitate communications more than anything else. Yeah, you can do some fancy stuff with it right now. And you know, as we speak right now, the tech giants are being grilled by a select committee in by Congress in the United States. Maybe they have too much power. But what a lot of people forget is the technology is much more powerful when we use it to communicate with each other. And what we're starting to see, uh, certainly on LinkedIn, is a return to the concept of social networking. Um, social media is just noise. Social networking is human beings interacting and engaging. And what LinkedIn has started to notice, well, uh, they've been planning this for the last year, is that far too many people use LinkedIn just to create more noise. They use it as a broadcast platform rather than a networking platform. So the LinkedIn algorithm has been tweaked relatively recently to reward users for networking and interacting, and engaging with other people rather than just broadcasting content. And we'll, we'll come on to that as, as we go. So I would imagine, I mean, I do this at every conference I ever speak to. I always say, put your hands up if you're on LinkedIn and like almost everybody puts their hands up. I then say, now put your hands up if you know why you're on LinkedIn and like hardly anybody puts their hands up. And then I go, put your hands up if you have a written down LinkedIn strategy. Nobody puts their hands up. So we're all on LinkedIn. We're not quite sure why we're on LinkedIn, but a herd mentality maybe. And certainly in professional service providers, more and more people are thinking, well, maybe Facebook's not the place that we should be seen on. Maybe we should be looking at a more professional in environment. So everybody's piled onto LinkedIn, though nobody really knows why they're on or how to use it. And one thing you have to remember is at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a piece of software. And like any other software that you use in your business, whether it's your CRM system or some sort of back office system, um, 
unless you've been trained on how to use it, you will never see the full benefits that it can potentially offer you. And what most people tend to do is, is this, they waste phenomenal amounts of time on LinkedIn, you know, and uh, I've been guilty of doing this. You know, you go onto the desktop or you go onto the app and you see the news feed and you have a bit of a scroll and it's kind of relevant to what you do. Then you see that little red dot at the top, or maybe somebody has sent me a message or maybe someone wants to connect with me and we have a look there and two or three people want to connect with you. Then you think, oh, should I be connecting them? What's the right, what's the right protocol? Should I connect with everyone or... You know, and then we have a look in a group. Maybe we do a status update. We might read something. And, you know, it's just fluffy, time wasting. It takes up far too much time and doesn't actually achieve anything. If there's one thing I'd ask you to take away from this this evening is start thinking with, about LinkedIn and a bit more strategically. Come up with a, a kind of a plan, even if it's a back of an envelope job. Think a bit more seriously about why you're on there, what you want to achieve, who do you want to talk to and literally write down a few steps and instantly you get a lot more focus on what you're doing. There are still a lot of people that, that, that look at LinkedIn and see it as a kind of fancy job site. And yeah, they still make a fair amount of their revenue um, from recruitment. But fundamentally, LinkedIn today is a real-time networking platform. And it's also a search engine. Okay, really important to remember that. In fact, no, I'm just going to put these up on the screen. I'm not going to go through them all, but LinkedIn is whatever you want it to be, depending on your goals for using the site. If you want to generate leads, you can do that. If you want to do some advertising, you can do that. If you want to see the latest news, you can do that. You can put blogs on, you can put articles on, you can put videos, you can do what you like. And LinkedIn's strategy is to be an indispensable business tool. They don't want you going anywhere else. If you use the features on LinkedIn, LinkedIn will reward you. And the way they tend to reward you is by making you more visible in the search results and they make your content more visible to more people. So use the tools and they will reward you. They want it to be an indispensable business tool. At its heart, it's a search engine. It is the people and expertise search engine. Right now, there are people on LinkedIn searching for the expertise that you have. And, the, and it's so, so important to understand that. The thing is, there's a lot of members on LinkedIn. So standing out from the crowd and being found in those search results is all important. So I'm going to show you a few things that will help you to become a lot more visible uh, in the search results, because trust me, there are people on LinkedIn right now looking for your expertise. So we want to make sure that they find you. The problem is, there are far too many lookalikes. When I'm working with financial advisors, you know, I say to them, we all look the same. You walk down any high street anywhere, one firm of accountants looks the same as another, one firm of lawyers looks the same as another, one firm of state agents looks the same as another, one firm of financial advisors looks the same as another. And they say back to me, Phil, that's unfair. We are different from Jones and Co. down the road. And I go, I know you are, but on your LinkedIn profile and on your website, you say exactly the same thing. You all use the same words, you all use the same phrases you don't stand out from the crowd. Not one single one of you are paid to look and behave like someone else in your profession. Unlike this lady here on the right, who is paid to look and behave like Audrey Hepburn. She is a professional lookalike. That's how she makes her money. But none of us are paid to look and behave like our colleagues, our peers, our competitors. Really important that we look different. So we get to a point where we have a LinkedIn profile and the simple fact of the matter is if you are on LinkedIn, you are marketing yourself. If you are not already receiving inquiries out of the blue from complete strangers, then arguably we need to put a bit more effort into how you are presenting and marketing yourself on LinkedIn. There are that many people searching for your skills, your expertise. You should actually be getting inquiries out of the blue from complete strangers. So we'll help you to make that happen. So roughly speaking, this is how it all works. You create a profile on LinkedIn. You put a few keywords on there. We'll talk about that in a minute or two. You do some stuff and maybe you use a few hashtags. We'll come on to hashtags a little bit later as to why they're important. So you have positioned yourself on LinkedIn, okay? And you are now in the LinkedIn search box somewhere. And there are people on LinkedIn who are using the search tool 
to find your expertise and let's say for sake of argument that you pop out top of the search results or there's something about you in the search results that they go I think we want to take a look at you and what tends to happen is they'll send you a connection request or they might send you a, a message something like that and there's a bit of chat goes on and in the real world that chat should lead to a coffee bar or a zoom call or a skype call there comes a point where the conversation has to come off LinkedIn. Although you can now do video messaging on LinkedIn, there comes a point where you've got to take the thing off, maybe just to a regular phone call or to an email. And it's really important to remember that, that business is, it does happen, but what norm, the normal way is you've got to take the conversation off LinkedIn. And if that conversation in the coffee bar goes well, you know, we might end up in a, in a champagne bar eventually if it all goes to plan. That's broadly speaking what happens. So what we've got to try and do is to make sure that we get found in the search results, that we understand how to message and communicate with people so that it is much more likely that we end up in that coffee bar. So we've got to know who our target market is. And one of the problems with on LinkedIn is people are, are rather too vague about who their ideal contact is. And it's worth doing a simple basic marketing exercise of being absolutely crystal clear about who you want to find you or who you want to appeal to. And if you know your target market, you will know the issues that people are worried about. You'll know what they're thinking about. You'll know what excites them. You'll know what motivates them. You'll know what scares them. Knowing your client is good old fashioned basic sales and marketing, but people seem to forget that all too often when they're on LinkedIn. Now, there's a lot of people on there, 700 million users. It's still dwarfed by Facebook, but there's enough people on there to keep us all in a very good living for quite a few years yet. And all the stats that come out, whenever they come out, whoever they come out from, show that as a result of looking at your LinkedIn profile compared with other social media platforms, you are far more likely to end up in a conversation that could lead to some work and some money being exchanged. And all sorts of metrics come out compared with uh, Facebook, uh, compared with Twitter, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore, but making professional connections, LinkedIn way ahead. Improving the effectiveness of my referral network, LinkedIn way ahead. Building my brand identity, way ahead. Cultivating prospects, way ahead. And so on and so forth. This thing works. We just have to know how to make it work. Now, when you ask people who are actually doing really well on LinkedIn, how has LinkedIn helped you? This is, this is what they tend to say. The top of the list, research people and companies. In other words, they're using it as a search engine. Reconnect with past associates and colleagues. I mean, there may be people you would rather not reconnect with, but that's what people are doing. And building relationships with people who could influence potential customers. There's a really interesting thing. You will talk to a lot of people on LinkedIn who will not necessarily work with you, but they will introduce you to someone who will. And that's a really, really, the second and third degree connections. Yes, if you get it right, you will work with people uh, straight off the bat. But what's much more likely to happen is you will get referred. And that's quite important thing to remember. So they're on LinkedIn. Your job is to find them or help them find you. Get their attention and then start a conversation. That is the basics of how this works. Those of you scribbling down notes will make sure that you get a copy of the slides and we'll try and make sure that you get a copy of the video as well so you can go through this slowly. So let's open it up a bit more. LinkedIn fundamentally is made up of three core themes and 10 core elements. The three core themes are identity at a personal and corporate level, networking, that's building your own network and connecting other people, and knowledge, both learning and sharing. Those are the, those are the main core themes. Underneath all that, the 10 core elements are all of this here. Now for most people on LinkedIn, and it does depend on what on your job role, most people are only using the, the one at the top. The more elements you can use on LinkedIn, the more features of LinkedIn that you use, the more LinkedIn rewards you and puts you, gives you greater visibility. Now you'll be looking at some of these things. I don't even know some of these things like what's a showcase page. There are lots of features on LinkedIn 
that are hidden, aren't really known about, and that's kind of part of my job to help unveil this stuff so that you, at least you know they're there. But all of them appear under the search box. First thing you need to do, as I just mentioned, you need to have a plan. Some sort of rough idea, what is it I want to achieve on the platform and how you're gonna go about doing it. Um, and it can be as simple as why am I on LinkedIn, what am I trying to achieve, and all importantly, how are you gonna measure the results? That's almost the easy bit, the measuring results. So let me show you my LinkedIn plan. And I said earlier, you could write this on the back of an envelope, here you go. This is my LinkedIn plan, it doesn't need to be particularly fancy. So my plan is to attract speaking and training business and sell some books, to be visible on the platform where my target market is hanging out. That could be in groups, it could be in blogs, it could be in a variety of different places. My plan is to create conversations with them. And then, as I said, get them into a coffee shop. And the sort of people I want to get into a coffee shop are people who book speakers for conferences, financial advisors, they're a prime market of, market of mine, suppliers to financial advisors, school careers leads, I do work in schools, um, and also professional service providers. These, that's, that's my plan. The detail of the plan comes later, but at least I've got it written down. So whenever I'm on LinkedIn, whether I'm on the mobile or whether I'm on my desktop, that's my focus. So start conversations that lead to you and your value ladder. And it's really important to get this concept of, of what a value ladder actually is. Um, really, really important, this one. Your value ladder is the, is the process of building trust and helping to get to know, help people to get to know you so that they feel much more likely that they actually want to work with you on a professional basis. So the steps of the value ladder could be giving away something free, an e-book, an e-guide, a pocket guide, uh, a free video series, a free webinar, something so that people can get to know you, get to like you, get to trust you. I'm sure we've heard that expression before. So it makes it much more likely that they feel, yeah, I've just got to work with you. And by way of some examples, I mean, let's look at the value ladder for, for say, dentists today. What dentists really want you to be doing is paying for the expensive stuff, yeah, the cosmetic surgery. But to get the, what a lot of dentists do these days is that they'll offer free teeth cleaning or maybe even free teeth whitening just to get you in the building. And, you, and, you know, the dentists themselves don't even need to do that bit. Somebody else can do that bit. But they get you in the building. They treat you like a king or a queen. They get some video testimonials off you. And you really build a relationship so that it makes it much more likely that you'll spend more money with them over the longer term. Equally, a chiropractor, um, you know, free consultation, maybe a free massage, get you in the building. What they actually want you to do is to go on their very, very expensive wellness retreat, you know, in a fancy hotel somewhere uh, with some yoga, uh, with some top chefs, maybe some speakers. That's what they really want you to do. In fact, what they, th these days more, they want to get you onto an ongoing subscription plan. But to get you to do that, to trust you, so that you trust them, they need to get you in the building and get to, get to, get so that you can get to know them. What do you suppose the value ladder for a gym might be? I mean, the value ladder for most gyms actually starts on the same day of the year, January the 1st. What they really want to do is to get you in there so that you have private coaching, so that you spend high men. But they, to do that, they give you what? A free trial. They just want to get you in the building so that you can get a feel for the place. That's what it kind of, kind of works. So I'll ask the question to you, what, what is your value ladder? How do you get people in the building, so to speak? I would argue that for a lot of people, your LinkedIn profile is an early step on your value. How you, how, pe how you are perceived, how you interact with people, how you engage with people uh, is a core part of our value ladder today. So let me ask you a question. What do you think the single biggest mistake is that people make on LinkedIn? What do you think that might be? I'll help you. Not fully completing your profile with the emphasis on the word fully. You have to remember that LinkedIn is a, is a service provider. And if you are searching for experts or expertise or certain types of people on LinkedIn and the search results that you find show half completed profiles, 
that doesn't reflect very well on LinkedIn. So what LinkedIn does is it rewards people for having a fully completed profile. And I'll show you all the sections in just a second. And you fully complete your profile, they bump you up in the search results. It's as simple as that. And you know, I've worked with people just, and they spend some time really completing their profiles, a few other things you need to do. It makes an immediate and noticeable improvement in their visibility in the search results. So that's job number one that you need to be thinking about. And LinkedIn even give you some stats, 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn when you've got a fully complete profile. Other mistakes that people make, not putting their contact information on, not engaging with other people and their content, in other words, not networking at a human level, and forgetting earnest prudence concept that people buy people, simple stuff. So these are the sections that everybody has available to them on a LinkedIn profile. I'm not gonna go through them all here. Now, a lot of people say, isn't this all gonna be rather time consuming? If your profile isn't too great right now, it might take you a while to get your profile up to speed. There's a lot to fill out. Uh, LinkedIn gives you prompts, which is absolutely fine, but you need to try and get some content into every single one of these sections. Really, really important that you do that. So that's the time consuming bit. Well, once that's done, the rest is really, really easy. So search results are everything. Fully complete your profile build a large network. Um, now there's schools of thought on network building. In the real world, you might argue that having a smaller, focused, high quality network is what you should be really focusing on. But on LinkedIn, they reward you for having a large network. Their idea of well-connected is not quite my idea of the expression well-connected. LinkedIn's idea of well-connected means having lots of people in your network. So I accept connection requests from absolutely everybody who wants to connect with me, except for obvious spammers. The thinking behind this is LinkedIn is thinking that if I've got a large network, it makes it much more likely that I will be referring people that I meet on LinkedIn from my large network. Hashtags in posts, we'll come on to that. Engage with other people's content and having keywords. These are the keys to being real high up in the LinkedIn search results. So let's put a bit more. Another benefit of having a fully completed profile is that Google will pick up your uh, LinkedIn profile and it will put you high in Google search results. So if I search for my name, and this changes every day pretty well, uh, if I search for my name, my website comes up top, the governor of Maryland comes up second, much more famous than me, and my LinkedIn profile comes in third. So really important that, that you have a full profile and it will get picked up by Google. So let's move on to profile pages. Um, now, what we don't want to happen, well, there's a clue in the picture there. We don't want people dropping off, falling asleep as they look at our profile. So I've kind of uh, come up with a test. Um, and you've got to capture people's attention. You've got to empathize with your visitors' problems. You've got to communicate in a tone that's unique to you. Try and avoid too much jargon, although a little bit jargon is fine, and have a clear call to action. Let me explain. Remember, remember, remember the concept that people buy people, okay? So the profile test that I've created is quite a high bar. Um, and your profile has to be irresistible. Irresistible to your target clients, your target market. Now, my wife works uh, in a large secondary school. She is a careers lead and she quite often books people to come in and speak to the students. Um, so she uses LinkedIn quite a lot. And I said, uh, I sent her an email while she was at work one day and I said, look, I'm putting this presentation together. You use LinkedIn. Can you give me some examples of profiles that you would consider to be irresistible? Half an hour later, she sends me an email there's nothing written in the email, but it has got something attached to it. And I open up the attachment and that's what I found. And then half an hour later, she sends me another email with another attachment and that's what was attached. Half an hour later, she sends me another one 
And half an hour later, she sends me a mail. Finally, there's some words in the email that said, I like this game. And that's what she sent me there. So I kind of get what irresistible might mean at one level. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a real LinkedIn profile. Somebody who's actually on LinkedIn. David Beckham is not on LinkedIn. Um, but I'm going to show you a real LinkedIn profile. And we're just going to together see if this profile meets my test. Okay, so here we go. A real LinkedIn member, a real LinkedIn profile picture. Just take a look at this person and just soak him up for a moment or two. Let him get into your psyche, into your soul. Now, you don't know even his name. You don't know what he does for a living. I mean, for all we know, that picture could have been taken in a police station. But at a gut human level, how do you feel about this person? Most people feel, oh, yeah, okay. I think this is a trick question. Most people think, yeah, he looks okay. He looks a jolly fella. So straight away, we're learning something about profile photos. So this is Art. And Art runs an office supplies outlet in Milwaukee. Art figures that every office supplies outlet anywhere in the world looks exactly the same. And Art doesn't want to be a lookalike. He knows that in office supplies outlets, the strategy is a race to the bottom on pricing. So he figured out there's got to be a way to differentiate his office supplies outlet from any other. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some of the stuff that he has written on his own LinkedIn profile. Okay. I'm going to have some water while you have a look at that. So this is literally stuff that he's written on his LinkedIn profile. There's more. So one of two things is happening here. He is either taking the mickey out of the LinkedIn system, and that's absolutely fine. I love finding uh, fun LinkedIn profiles. I kind of collect them. I use them in presentations. Or he's the real deal. And he's the real deal. The testimonials for Art's business are off the scale. He's also got an online service as well. He told me no one uses his online service. He said people would rather get in their pickup truck and drive for three or four hours. He said, in the hope that I'm there and I'll take them to lunch. First time I found this guy, uh, I looked at his profile. He sends me a message. Um, he said, dear Mr. Social Media Guy, thanks for taking a look at my profile. I hope you found something of interest. I imagine you're putting a presentation together on how not to use LinkedIn. Please feel free to use anything from my profile. And if you're ever in my area, pop round, we'll have one of my lunches. That is how you use LinkedIn. That's how you network and interact and engage with people. So art's differentiator is a bit of humor, self-deprecating humor. These are the words that are on your profile. These are the words that are on 99% of LinkedIn members' profiles. They don't quite jump off the page like the words on art's profile, do they? I reckon we can all tick off one or two of these words on our LinkedIn profile. But there's the proof. And every, every year, LinkedIn brings out a list of the most overused words on LinkedIn. And, every, and this is the most recent list. And the, and the list is broadly the same every single year. So we all behave the same on LinkedIn. We're all using the same words on LinkedIn. We are simply failing to differentiate ourselves. And therefore, we are failing to market ourselves as well as we could be. So just a couple of quick suggestions. Write it in the first person. Please don't write it in the second person or third person. John has been a financial planner for 28 years. He's got this exam. He's got, we all know you wrote it, John. Okay. <laughs> write it in the first person. Be punchy. Tell stories. Get your punctuation right. Start with something that somebody might recognize. If music is your passion, music is your, if your first love, put it on your profile. That'll get people's attention. Write it as if it was being written for your perfect dream client. If your perfect dream client happens upon your profile and it reads to them, you know, they're going to they're gonna want to talk to you. Yes, you can be assertive. Get some personality. Put some pictures on there. Put some videos on there. Use presentations. 
mix it up. I'll explain a bit more as we go. So the example of a chiropractor, a chiropractor could get away with saying this on their LinkedIn profile underneath their name. Do you suffer from chronic elbow pain? That means the chiropractor knows their target audience. Why else would you be looking at a chiropractor's profile on LinkedIn? So you can be direct with, with LinkedIn. It's okay. We are far too fluffy most of the time. But so it's important to remember that your profile is not a CV, yeah? It's not a resume. It is your online reputation. Equally, your LinkedIn profile is not a circus poster. You could argue that art's profile is treading into circus poster territory. So it's about getting the balance right. Okay, so here's a little exercise. We won't do this right now uh, because it's an exercise that's worth giving some thought to. What you need to do is to get a sheet of paper and you need to write down a dozen keywords. These are words that you would hope that if someone typed them into the LinkedIn search box, you would come up high in the search results. That's what we need to be doing, coming up with 12 keywords that would lead to you. Now, let's take a financial advisor. Um, a keyword can be more than one word. It could be pension or retirement planning expert in Reading. That could be one keyword. So you need to come up with a list of 12 if you possibly can. If you're in a very niche market and you can only come up with half a dozen, that's absolutely fine, but come up with something. Then what you need to do is to number these keywords in order of importance. So the single most important keyword is number one. You then need to take the top five keywords on your list and go down to the local tattoo artist and have them tattooed on your heart. They are that important to you. Actually, print them off. Stick them on the wall in front of you. These keywords are critically important. And you can use these keywords. If you, in many ways, you're, you, you want to own these keywords. They're part of your branding. Use these keywords. Use them throughout your LinkedIn profile. You want to try and take those top five keywords and get them into as many of your LinkedIn sections on your profile as you possibly can. Okay? There may well be some other keywords that you want to think about as well related to services that you offer or some specific technical skills or some soft skills that you've got maybe some specific industry related keywords a little bit of jargon maybe some business skills that you've got or a location that you're targeting so if you're working around the world um, or, uh, again put towns put countries put cities that you want to work in. Put them in there. It does make a difference. Okay, hashtags. Now, hashtags are a, a curious animal. The way they tend to work, and this works for Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn particularly, a hashtag is a way to add emphasis to something you want to say. So maybe you got up this morning at 5.30 a.m. and you went for your morning run, as you do, and you, you came back and you went onto Twitter or LinkedIn, and you felt the need to tell the world that you'd just been for a run. So that you would tweet, just done my morning run, set up for the day, and you'd put hashtag fitness, hashtag smug. So what a hashtag does is it adds emphasis to what you are saying, but what it also does is it makes your tweet or your post much more visible in search results. Because remember, I mentioned people use LinkedIn as a search engine. People use Twitter as a search engine. And if I go on to Twitter or I go on to um, LinkedIn and I type into the search box, hashtag fitness, your post is much more likely to appear in their stream. So as well as your keywords, you want to come up with about three hashtags that are really, really important to you, depending on your industry. Okay, let's have a, a closer look at, at profiles. What you ought to do is to customize your LinkedIn URL. And in an ideal world, you want to customize it with a keyword. I've actually taken my name out of it and replaced it with keywords. So if a conference organizer is looking for a sales speaker or a keynote speaker for a conference, by me doing that, 
makes it much more likely that I will appear in their search results. It also looks nicer when you print your LinkedIn URL on your business cards. I mean, you do have your LinkedIn URLs on your business cards. Really important. You want to show off your LinkedIn profile. So if it says Carol Spears 4X97, you know, that's what most people have got on their LinkedIn profile. Their name and a jumble of words, and of letters and numbers. Edit that away. At the very least, edit it down to just your name, but think about adding a keyword as well, and then put it in your LinkedIn, in your email signature, on your business cards and everywhere else, okay? Underneath our name, we have what's called a professional headline. And what you wanna do is put something in there that is aimed fairly and squarely right between the eyes of your target audience or your target client. Now I chop and change my um, professional headline once every once a month pretty well. So for the last few months, I've been using this professional headline. With challenging times upon us, are you looking for more business leads? Now's the time to leverage LinkedIn. Okay, ask about my proven online training. So there's the directness bit. You'll also notice that it extends to four lines. LinkedIn has recently increased the number of characters that you can use. No one seems to know the actual number, but you can get a good four lines worth in there these days. So they give you a bit more space. But ask a question, but ask a question that is aimed at your main target audience. Another day, another year, I would have used this. Are you looking for a high content LinkedIn expert, profit producing sales speaker? for your next conference or event. That question is aimed at conference organizers and meeting planners and people who wanna hire me. I'm aiming it at my target market. What else do you notice about my, that professional headline? It's a question. In people's heads, they subconsciously answer the question. If I'm a chiropractor and I put in my headline, are you suffering from chronic elbow pain? And the person looking at my profile is suffering from chronic elbow pain in my head. I'm going, go, yeah, that's me. That's me. And I'm going to read the rest of the profile. What else do you notice about it? The first letter of each word is capitalized. It is an old copywriting technique that makes it look more important than it actually is. Capitalization of the first word it's just a simple little trick, but we are trying to do, we're trying to pull every trick out the bag to get people's attention, including a little bit of psychology. You can consider putting keywords in your name as well. Jeremy's a financial planner here. He's put keywords in his name. LinkedIn only recently allowed you to do that because what people used to do was abuse it like this. Okay, so... You want to do that, but if you're going to put keywords in your name, don't abuse it. Be professional, yeah? Something that is brand new on LinkedIn. Only literally in the last week this has come out. You may not have even seen this yet. If you look just to the right of my name, you'll see a little speaker. And the idea of the little speaker is so that people can hear me telling them the pronunciation of my name. Now, pronunciation of my name is fairly easy and obvious, but it is, it, what LinkedIn is actually giving you is 10 seconds of audio time to use as you see fit. They pitch it as a pronunciation tool, but if you could do a 10 second message in there, use it. Brand new tool, you record it through the mobile app where you edit your profile, play around with it, might as well use it. Okay, current experience as we scroll down, what most people do is they, they fill in the job bit that they're, or the name of their company, but what they don't do is fill in the bit below. The bit below gives you an opportunity to get keywords in there. Okay, so use that space. Um, don't just do the top bit where you just put where you work and what you are, but fill in this bit and get some keywords. But what you could also do is you can have multiple entries. It's not just where you're working right now and where you used to work. It's also what you're doing right now. So if as part of your job, maybe you're doing some seminars or maybe you're doing some webinars for the next three weeks, put that in there. Show people what you're doing. Give people a sense of what you're doing, not just where you work and what you do, but specific activities that you've been doing. 
then we move on to how you your website so the contact details the bit i really want to show you is the free text after my website address yeah put your website address in there but what most people don't realize is you can put see the bits in brackets there you can put some free text after your website address which gives you another opportunity to get some keywords in there so that first one book me to speak at your event the way you do that is you go into the edit, edit settings now the linkedin privacy and editing settings are quite detailed and comprehensive you'll have to dig around they move things around a bit but this is the bit you're looking for and what you do is you put your website address in there they then give you some options over here on the right. The options are your website, your blog, something else, and other. What you need to do is choose other. And when you choose other, it lets you put this free text in here as well. Not much, but a little bit of free text gives you an opportunity to get some keywords in there. Another thing you want to do is show your birthday, which might sound really odd to do, but show your birthday because it gives you so my birthday uh, last year 462 people sent me birthday greetings on linkedin most people didn't bother to customize they just used the ready-made message 462 people now the reason i did that is because it gives me 462 opportunities to have a conversation hi sue great to hear from you how are things in your business is there anybody I could introduce you to that could help you at the moment? Have you got any specific problems that I can introduce somebody to that could help you? Now, admittedly, I used a bit of copy and paste, but I customized every single one of them. Really, really important to do that. It's opportunities to start conversations and those conversations will lead somewhere. It could be a profile view. It could be a coffee shop. And that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. So you want to be proud of your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn even gives you some badges. Okay. And uh, when you get the slides, you go to this link, you can put the badges on your blog, on your website, in your email signature. They even give you the code, which you can drop into your website. If you can't do it, your kids will do it for you. Don't worry about that. Um, but what I'm getting at here is be proud of your LinkedIn profile. Show it off. Yeah. Show it off. Okay. So maybe I'm looking for a financial advisor. And maybe Tom has come up in my search results and I like the look of Tom. Turns out he's a financial planner at Serenity Financial Planning. I like the look of him. Seems a nice guy, nice photo. Um, but this is a real screenshot, but I've blanked something out off the screenshot. Can anybody guess what, what I might have blanked out? Okay, I'll start revealing it here. And it's on the right hand side. It's a little column that says people also viewed. So I'm now showing you the full screenshot of Tom's profile. And what's actually happening here is that LinkedIn on Tom's profile is showing me a list of Tom's competitors. And it may well be that I start looking down the right hand side and there's Liam and there's David and there's Anthony and there's Tina and there's Adam at the bottom. Now Adam seems to have letters after his name. Tom seems to be a financial planner, but Adam seems to be a chartered financial planner. Maybe Adam's better. You see what I was saying earlier about being distracted. And there's a very good chance that I'm now going to go and have a look at Adam's profile. And it may well be that Tom doesn't get my call, doesn't get my message. So the good news is we can switch that off. In the edit session settings, there's the ability to turn off that right hand column that displays your competitors. Isn't that cool? Onward. Photos. Let's talk about photos. You've got to have a great photo. Really, really important. And if you haven't got a photo, you might as well leave now. And there's all sorts of evidence that's shown that if you haven't got a photo, nobody's interested. But there's photos and photos. Broadly speaking, you need to look friendly and professional. Emma, I'm sure Emma's lovely. I'm sure she's very friendly. I'm sure she's very professional. But that's not the best of photos, is it? I need to be able to see the whites of her eyes. On the other side of the coin, Adam, friendly and professional, a bit more relaxed, shows the more office environment today, yeah? And here's an interesting thing. If we like the look of people's profile photos, all of us do this on LinkedIn. If we like the look of someone, we tend to click on their profile. And I know photos now are round, but what happens is if you've got a big enough file uploaded for your photo, the picture gets bigger so that you can take a closer look. 
So if you haven't if you haven't put a newish photo on there recently, you can now put a, a fairly fairly chunky I think it's eight eight megabyte file so that people when they click on you they can take a closer look. Uh, so I just want to kind of make this point about profile photos. So here's Andy's profile photo. Here's how Bart chooses to show himself on LinkedIn. This is a financial advisor. Like there's nothing on her profile that says she collects lizards and snakes. That's her photo. Yeah. This is a financial advisor. I mean, what is it about financial advice? And it's not just financial advisors, you know, um, we, we've got to get to grips with this. This isn't Facebook. I'm all for people showing off their character on LinkedIn, but you've got to be sensible. This is not a financial advisor, but it's a real LinkedIn profile. And occasionally we find funnies. These are professional service providers, but those photos aren't up to the mark. He's even on there as well. And I thought, well, that's, okay, that's a good one. So I actually stopped and had a closer look at, at his profile. And it, he joined, you know, you can join groups on LinkedIn. One of the groups he's joined is this. There's a group for everyone on LinkedIn. That's where you're going to find your clients. So if you wanted to connect with accountants, there are th almost 4,000 groups on LinkedIn for accountants. Some of them have got tens of thousands of members. You want to connect with lawyers, 800 groups. Sorry, sorry 7,000 groups. You want to connect with people who are interested in golf, 4,500 groups. People like yoga, 2,500 groups. Entrepreneurs, it just goes on and on and on. That's where people who have got something in common with you are hanging out. And that's the key, having something in common. You don't go into those groups and say, hi, I'm here, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. What we're trying to do is just interact and engage with people at a human level, just like art did with me. So if you do have a distinctive photo, try and put some relevance to it in your LinkedIn profile. So this guy here uh, runs a Lexus dealership in central London. His passion in life is the outdoor world, climbing, hiking, walking, mountaineering. He loves it. And he's put that in his LinkedIn profile. One of the first things in the first lines is the outdoor world is my life. It only needs one person who wants to buy a Lexus or a fleet of Lexuses who also loves the outdoor life. And he's come up in the search results. They see his profile. They're not going to go look at somebody else's profile. It is as simple as that. Connect with people at a human level and include something of yourself in there. So, to conclude on photos, do what the people who know about this stuff. Jeff, the boss at LinkedIn, friendly and professional. Dara, the CEO at Uber, friendly and professional. Melanie, head of strategy at Google, friendly and professional. This guy looks friendly and professional. Another one I found on there which made me smile. Okay, so what else about photos? Let's not underestimate how important they are. What we tend to do on photos is we try to do our best to look competent and confident yet the psychologists tell us that's actually not what people are looking for when they look at profile photos on linkedin what people are actually looking for is trustworthiness trustworthiness between human beings is absolutely you guys you know this better than most yeah trustworthiness is so important it is believed the only reason we shake hands is to prove that we're not concealing a weapon Okay, so if you can make yourself look trustworthy as well on LinkedIn, all the better. And one way to do that is when you have your photo is try and try and have your hands visible, the palm of your hands. That psychologists tell us helps you to look much more trustworthy. Really tricky to get the balance of all these things. Friendly and professional, I think is really important. But if you've got a variety of photos, ask a few friends, does it make me look trustworthy? Put pictures on your LinkedIn profile. It makes a huge difference by adding pictures and images. It just shoots up. When I added these two photos, my profile visits just rocketed. So put all sorts of imagery uh, on your profile as well. Great use of imagery is to use um, testimonial, pictures of testimonials that people have posted, presentations. Infographics are really, really good. Um, I mean, this one, 
this was a mortgage broker in the United States. He could have written a very boring blog about how to improve your credit score, but what he decided to do instead was to create an infographic. Uh, because some people, as you know, are much more visual. They'd much rather look at pretty pictures. So a great tool to create infographics is Canva. Go to canva.com. You don't need to be a professional graphic designer. Ready-made tools, drag and drop, super easy. Another free tool on every, everything I've talked about today is uh, free on LinkedIn. The big image at the top. If I profess to be a speaker, I'm going to use the big picture at the top to show a picture of me on a stage. I could even go to Canva and take the picture and add some text as well. A friend of mine is a financial advisor down in Penzance. He has his own YouTube channel. And he's a podcaster. So he's using the big picture at the top uh, to show a bit more into him. Now, I'm conscious of time. I've got a bit more. Carol, how, what would you, how would you want to play it? If you guys would like to stick around for a little bit more, you're very welcome to, or if you've got time constraint, what would you like to do, Carol? Can I unmute you? Right, okay. Um, I'm very happy to sit tight because what you're saying is really invaluable. And we've got 22 people who haven't gone anywhere. Alex is putting her thumb up. So I would say if you're happy to carry on, then Phil, we're happy to be with you. Fantastic. Okay, great stuff. I'll try not to take up too much of your time, but I have more. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Okay, photos. Um, photos, unlike Facebook, photos don't always work on LinkedIn, but for LinkedIn will reward you by uploading photos as status updates through the LinkedIn mobile app. They like you to use the mobile app. So take photos, tell little stories. When I was speaking in India, they had an elephant outside the conference. So you've got to have a selfie with the elephant, upload it to LinkedIn, tell the little story. Here's a speaker bureau, the conference I was speaking at. Little stories with pictures work really well through the mobile app. Okay, a bit more on the summary section. Bullet points are really good. Unless you are really good at copywriting, use bullet points um, in your profile. This guy here, uh, he's really gone to town on the bullet points. Um, you know, there's no waffle in there, straight to the point. Tina, on the other hand, she's not gone for the bullet points thing. She's a financial advisor in North London, but she knows the LinkedIn game. And I'm going to turn on my forensic torch onto her profile. And what do we see? Keywords. Financial planning, financial planning, financial advisor, financial planning. She's got her main keywords high up the page. And the reason why they are high up the page is because when Google comes along to look at your profile, Google only reads the top 25% of a LinkedIn profile before going off somewhere else. So you want to get your main keywords into the first few bullet points or into the first paragraph of your summary section. Absolutely critical that you do that. Volunteering. Now, this is one of the sort of hidden features, but is becoming more and more important. I think it, it, we all know that more and more of us today will purchase products and services based on our perception of a company's ethical and environmental credentials. LinkedIn has got a whole section where you can talk about what you care about. In fact, they divide these into different um, segments, a variety of things here, politics, humanitarian relief, animal welfare, and so on and so forth. Again, if you care about the environment and you've put that on your LinkedIn profile, you only need one other person who's looking for the expertise that you have got who also cares about the environment and they're not going to go somewhere else. You've connected with them at a human level. So, so important. So there's a section that you need to fill in. Martin is a financial advisor just down the road from me, really good at internet marketing, but he's used his volunteer section to talk about local stuff, how he works with his local community. Runs Cranley Park Run, runs Cranley and Bloom, Cranley Chamber of Commerce. Local community stuff, really, really important. Get it on your profile. Then we have the skills section, which is a bit clunky, and it's a kind of quick and dirty way for people to rate you for skills they believe you have. And they divide LinkedIn segments the skills into your top skills, your industry knowledge, tools, interpersonal, and anything else. So I could put gin and tonic making in the other section if I wanted to. And so people can just give you a quick thumbs up, if you like, for a particular skill. So let's say, I, and I can look at any of the skills that I've put on my profile, and you can put 50 
different skills on there. And what you want to try and do is get some keywords into your skills. And what I can then do is I can have a look and see who has rated me for any particular skill. So 150 people have rated me for speaking and I can just have a look through the list. But what do you think I should do now? Somebody rates me for speaking. What do you think I should do? Guess what? How about say thank you? Did you know that 99.9% .9 of people on LinkedIn never bother to say thank you for when somebody gives them a skills ranking or a testimonial? Do you think that would make differentiate you if you said thank you? Do you think there's an opportunity to have a conversation with someone if you say thank you? Answer is yes. What about art skills? Well, what has art chosen to put as his skills on his own profile? Invisible to women, sales, more patient than I should be with people who are stupid. So what Art is doing, he is continuing his self-deprecating humor right through his LinkedIn profile. I, I just love the fact that 17 people have actually endorsed him for being invisible to women. I find that quite amusing. But his real skill, of course, is sales. Yeah, that's what this is about. People buy people. Always have done, always will do, and they do it online as well. So we've set up our profile, we've got our keywords going on, we've got some nice pictures, what do we do next? For most of us, the main job of work to do is to get people to look at our profile. We've got to get some attention somehow. And we've got to remember that no one looks at our profile by accident. People always do it on purpose, and it's important to remember that. And you do any of these things here on LinkedIn, it can result in someone wanting to look at your profile. This is a slide worth printing off when you get the slides and pin it up because these are the things that get you profile views. There are other things that work really well on LinkedIn right now, and I'm not going to go through them all, but story-based status updates, video status updates, commenting on other people's content, commenting on very niche stuff, commenting in groups, live streaming, audio messages, and video messages. These are the things that get attention again when you get the slides go through them in a bit more detail so we've all sent and we've all received private messages on linkedin how many of you have sent an audio message on linkedin not too many i'll bet do you think that would make differentiate you from other people do you think it would make it more likely that someone would actually click the play button because it's quite easy to ignore messages Another thing you can do is you can send video messages on LinkedIn as well. It's all done through the, through the app. Live streaming video is astonishingly powerful. Um, LinkedIn wants you to use live streaming video. They don't give it to you by right. You have to apply to do that. There is a link. If you drop me a line, I'll send you to where you can apply to you have live streaming video. But anybody who's using it says it's amazing. You've got to know your numbers on LinkedIn. If you have a website, you really do need to know how many visitors, where they came from, what do they search on Google. Same goes for LinkedIn. Know your numbers. So let me ask you this. Would you like to know the names and contact details of everyone who ever visits your website? Do you think that would be good? Of course it would be. I can't give you that, but I can give you the next best thing. I can give you the names and addresses of anybody who looks at your LinkedIn profile. Wow, that's amazing. Not only that, how many people viewed your profile, what they do for a living, where they work, what search term they used, and who followed you as well. That is amazing data. They reset the data every Monday, but it's available 24-7. Really important. So they give you some pretty graphs as well, which is, which is great. So then they send, every now and again, they send you some ad hoc data. And here's a recent piece. It's the, the data they sent me was, it said, Phil, you've shown up in search results 70 times in the last three days. Now, that I'm quite pleased with. It kind of suggests that I've got my keyword strategy about right, but what's actually much more important is this one. 12 of them went on to actually look at my profile. So I, I can click on the link and I can see who looked at my profile. What do you think I should do next now that I know who looked at my profile? What do you think I should do next? How about say thank you? Now, I'll bet you that every one of you think that's a good idea. I'll bet you that most of you don't ever say thank you to people for looking at LinkedIn profiles. 
This is, I go back to what I said earlier, we think the technology is going to do the work. No, it isn't. The technology is going to facilitate human communication. 99.99% of people on LinkedIn never bother to say thank you for looking at LinkedIn profile. If you had a high street shop and someone walked into your shop and you like ran away and hid, how, how would they perceive you to be? We say thank you. We say hi. What I'm not saying is when we go to someone and say, thanks for looking at my profile, would you like to buy my stuff? We don't do that. If you'd like some scripts, drop me a line and I'll show you where you can get some scripts to do this, okay? So that feature is, in my view, the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn. The ability to see who's looked at your profile and then send them a message and say thank you to them because that is starting a conversation. You do that, you'll be staggered by your experience of LinkedIn, how it will change. And I've had people say to me the very first time they said thank you, they ended up with new clients. This happens time and time again. Now, one or two of you might know this guy, this is Thomas Power. Uh, some would argue that he and his wife invented profile pages. And Thomas is a master networker. Um, he can connect you to anyone in the world. Now, he do, when he does networking training, one of the things he does is he talks about the original social networking website that he and his wife created, Ecademy. Ecademy. Some of you will remember Ecademy from many years ago. It was around long before LinkedIn. Thomas and his wife Penny created the profile page. But Thomas was always an advocate of the people by people concept. And he always encouraged people to put personal stuff on your profiles. And one of the things he's got on his profiles, what he certainly used to do, was the fact that he used to collect corks. Now, when he does LinkedIn training, or when he does networking training, he always says to people, does anybody, in the, he's got 50 people in the room, does anybody here collect corks? And he says, there's always a couple of people sheepishly put their hands up. He says, well, I collect corks. And I've been to Thomas's house and he's got a room where you're like wading through corks. But then he also says, out of interest, does anybody here like Manchester United? And there's always a few people who say, anybody here like running? A few hands go up. Anybody here like yoga? A few hands up. And he says, that's interesting. And then he carries on with his training and then there's a coffee break. And then what he likes to do is look at the corner of his eye. He sees slowly but surely the cork collectors come together at the coffee machine. The Manchester United fans come together in a corner of the room. The people like running, they just magically come together. The people like yoga come together. Human beings are hardwired to connect with people who've got something in common. And it's really enriching. You know when you go to a dinner party and you sat next to a complete stranger and you may or may not get on with them. But it's that magic moment where, some, where one of you says, oh, uh, yeah, I was playing tennis the other day. Oh, you play tennis, do you? I'd love to. That magic moment when you realize you've got something in common, that's when it all starts. That's where you feel the relationship starts to build. And it's the same on LinkedIn. So this is advanced stuff, but it works, okay? So here's Tina again. Now, LinkedIn used to let you put a list of things that you're interested in, okay? And each of the things on your list used to be clickable. Now, Tina is a financial advisor. She could never find the right financial advisors to hire for her business. And I said, I'll show you a little trick. Now, Tina is Greek, okay? I said, Tina, pick any word from your list there and I'll find you a financial advisor that might want to talk to you. So she says, okay, bazooki, you know, the stringed instrument. So we click on the word bazooki. Now, this is an old version of LinkedIn, so it looks a bit funny. LinkedIn does a search and it finds quite a few other people who've got Bazooki on their LinkedIn profile. And the algorithm arranges them in order of relevance to Tina. So Tina's at the top, but look who comes in second, another financial advisor who just happens to be in Cyprus. Tina is Greek. She was born in Cyprus. All of a sudden, they've got multiple things in common. They've both got Bazooki on their LinkedIn profile. They're both financial advisors. They both know Cyprus. Do you think if Tina sent Paul a, a relevant message that he's going to talk to her? Of course they are. They've got things in common. So this is how I use LinkedIn. So one of the things I do uh, is a bit of kickboxing. And so I can use the word kickboxing to find me an opportunity to speak at a conference. Now, I like speaking at um, big financial services sales conferences. They're big events. They pay well. 
and I'm going to sell a lot of books. So they don't do the list thing anymore, but I just type kickboxing into the search engine. LinkedIn does a search and it finds 50,000 people who've got kickboxing on their LinkedIn profile. The first few pages are going to be kickboxing instructors. I don't want an instructor. I've got one. So what I now do is I hit the filters. And so I use the filters London. Let's make it hard for myself. And I choose financial services. LinkedIn then redoes the search for kickboxing. And it finds me 128 people on LinkedIn who've got kickboxing on their profile, who are in London and who are in financial services. And there is my way into Barclays, Rui. Now, I'll lay any money that Rui is not the guy that books speakers for their conference, but he's my way in. So I have a look at Rui's profile. Have a look, see what's going on. Turns out he's quite hardcore. So I now decide to send Rui a message. What message do you think I should send him? Do you think I should send him this message here? So you're all shaking your heads. So why does everybody send that message? In fact, some people don't even send that message. They just hit the connect, the connect button and don't even send a message. Do you think Rui's going to pay any attention if I send that message? Of course he's not. So what I do is I personalize it to him. And I'll put something that's going to get his attention. All I'm trying to do is get Rui into a coffee shop. And we're going to talk about martial arts and kickboxing. And when the relationship starts to build, then we can start introducing each other to other people. This is how you use LinkedIn. I also do it with yoga as well. Uh, I do a bit of yoga. Um, so I type yoga into, so I want, with this search, I want to get hold of meeting organizers, conference organizers. So I type yoga. LinkedIn does a search, finds 650,000 people. Most of them are yoga teachers. I don't want a yoga teacher. I want someone in the events world. So I hit the filters, United Kingdom. I choose event services. It redoes the search and it finds 420 people. 420 people who are events organizers and who do yoga. I can now send them a very, very customized message. That's how you use LinkedIn to engage with people, yeah? Status updates, just to start right winding up here. It's all about the algorithm. It's all about getting attention. The algorithm is looking for people dwelling on your content. So even if you're scrolling through on the app, if someone stops for a moment or two to just hover over your post, LinkedIn gives it a few more points and it will show it to a few more people. If it gets some likes, it will show it. LinkedIn algorithm will show it to a few more people. A few comments, it shows it to a few more people and so on and so forth. And sometimes if it's doing really well, a real human being will actually twiddle a knob and it will show it to thousands and thousands of people. So that presupposes that the content you put on has got to be actually interesting. This is the worst type of content that you can put on LinkedIn. Click here. Take a look at our blog. Never do that kind of stuff. Never encourage people to click somewhere and visit another website. LinkedIn will penalize that post because you have proactively encouraged people to leave LinkedIn, albeit temporarily. Okay, so don't do that kind of stuff. Stuff that works, tell stories. Try not to put images unless you've done them through the app. Try to avoid links. It is a good idea to comment on other people's posts. Put some hashtags in there and put video on. If you want to do articles on LinkedIn, you can't get away with putting low rate stuff. They've got to be long, detailed, research based and unique insights. So that by definition will take time. But if that's your strategy, that's the way you want to use LinkedIn, follow that strategy and you'll get some, some good leverage that way. In many ways, this is the perfect LinkedIn post. A BBC journalist early on in lockdown came off his shift. Someone had nicked his bike. So he does a quick video, um, absolutely brilliant. It gets people's attention, gets people's curiosity. He's used video, it's timely. In other words, it was relevant to coronavirus. It was a little bit emotional. There was a message in there and he used some hashtag. That's a perfect LinkedIn post, yeah? Here's one I did. I was going off to speak in Bulgaria and I hadn't organized my time. I needed to get a haircut as I do now. I needed to go to the post office, but before I did that, I 
uh, checked out the price of parking at Gatwick, 27 quid. So I thought, okay, clock that. I went down the village, did my errands, came back, went to book the parking, the price had gone up. That's a simple little human story. It got me 1,200 likes, 200 comments, 23 direct messages. So that's a great way to use LinkedIn, simple human stories. Turn on that little radar in your head that looks for content like that, yeah? If you want to go for the jugular, go for the cute stuff. Um, so Max, first day at work for Magnus, new office dog. Look at that, 227 people have got nothing better to do with their time than to comment on that post, yeah? See how easy this stuff is. And I know the LinkedIn trolls come out and say, this isn't appropriate for LinkedIn. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. We're trying to get profile views, and this is how you do it. Nick, you can only, it runs a Bentley dealership. You can only use three words to describe your thoughts on this. Green Bentley. 1,300 people commented on that. Emily, you might have even seen this one. Um, Emily was HR manager at Asda. She posted on LinkedIn. This is Patrick. He's 86. He stopped me in Leeds to ask me about my day. He asked if I had time for coffee. Cancelled my meeting. Spent two hours with him. 230,000 likes, 11,000 comments. Now, Asda probably got some fairly tight social media policies. She may have broken a few rules there, but no one's going to complain about that. Human interest stories are what works, yeah? Richard McCann, fantastic speaker. He's now doing um, video status updates on LinkedIn. People by people. People want to see the whites of your eyes as well. Hashtags, really powerful, not to spend too much time on this, but my goodness, does this work. Do you remember earlier we were thinking about hashtags? What we need to do is tell the LinkedIn algorithm that certain hashtags are important to us. So what we do, if you're a mortgage broker, what you do is you type hashtag mortgages into the search box. LinkedIn then shows you that there are eight thousand followers of the hashtag mortgages it then invites you to click the follow button if you click the follow button you are sending a message to the linkedin algorithm that mortgages is a topic that you are interested in okay really important that you do that but what will then happen is the whole linkedin news feed will change to only show you content related to mortgages and then your job is just to go comment on other people's stuff equally you could do it with pensions Type in pen, hashtag pensions, five and a half thousand followers, click the button, newsfeed changes, you then comment on other people's posts. So, a financial advisor could type in hashtag mortgages, follow the mortgage button, then look at the feed and comment on other financial advisors' posts or posts that are relevant. And all you need to do is put great posts, so thanks for the heads up, and then add hashtag mortgages. Or thanks for your post, Mike. Have you read so-and-so's book? Highly recommended. Hashtag financial planning. Hashtag investment. What you are now doing is A, engaging with other people at a human level. And you are also telling the LinkedIn algorithm that you are a networker and not a broadcaster. LinkedIn is rewarding you for treating it as a social networking platform and not a social media platform. This is, a, this is a new technique. It is amazingly powerful. Follow a hashtag that's relevant to your area of expertise. Look at the content that comes up in the newsfeed and then just do one line of comments and watch the number of profiles, views that you get go up and up and up over the coming weeks and days. And when people look at your profile, what do you do next? Hi, John. Hi, Sue. Thanks for taking a look at my profile. So just to sum up, be clear about who you're targeting. Be really clear about who you're targeting. Have a plan. Play to the algorithm and start conversations that lead to your value ladder. The plan bit is so, so important. I can't stress that enough, yeah? And from today, start treating LinkedIn as an asset of your business, not just some other tech tool that somebody said you ought to be using. Treat it as an asset of your business. It's really, really important. Yeah. And remember what my grandfather said, people by people. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. And in your messaging, 
and said, send me a message and I'll send you some scripts that just work. You will see that these scripts, there's no element of sales. They're all about trying to get conversations going that lead to places where you can get to know people, like them and build a relationship. Yeah. So how good are you at LinkedIn? This is the link that you need to go to. You don't need to do it this evening, but do it at your leisure. LinkedIn success. And there you will find a kind of questionnaire. It'll take you about 10 minutes, 12 minutes to do. And it asks you how you use LinkedIn. Uh, it, it asks you about your LinkedIn strategy, your profile, how you communicate with people, some of the tools, how do you use them? And it'll give you a score at the end. The score will shock you, <laughs> but that's the idea. And, but it will give you recommendations for improvement. That's how it works. And at the end of the score, it will give you a free ebook, which is kind of a LinkedIn planner uh, that you just follow the plan and watch the clients come in. Okay, that's it. I'm conscious I've taken up your time, but I hope that extra bit has been of, uh, of use to you. Hope you found it useful. This doesn't need to end now. If you've got any questions at any time, just send me a message and we'll help you out. So thanks very much, Carl. time, Phil, for any questions. Phil, do you want any time for questions? Uh, yeah, if anybody wants to ask any questions, we got some questions. I was going to say, if anybody, anybody got a question, unmute yourself, please, and ask Phil. I will What's answer one question that I didn't answer. And the one that comes up time and time again is, should I have premium membership? Mm. Everything I've shown you today, you can do for free. So you don't need premium membership. Mm. I say again, the only reason I have premium membership, and I happen to think that premium membership is expensive for what you get. If you are an HR director or an HR person, you, someone else is going to pay it for you so you can have sales navigator and all this fancy stuff as well. I happen to think there's nothing in sales navigator that you can't do a workaround for, but the only reason I have premium membership is so that I can see the full list of people who've looked at my profile on the free version of LinkedIn. You get to see the last five people, but if you log in every day and see who's looked at your profile, you'll always be up to date on who's looked at you. But, with the premium, but even the cheapest premium membership, you get to see the last 90 days worth. And to me, that's worth happening. And if you get a few clients as a result of doing that strategy, it'll pay for itself many times over. Right, what it sounds like, I, I haven't got time to thank you, Phil, because I've got to go and sort out my LinkedIn profile. I Absolutely. Mean, I, just, <laughs> I can't even sleep tonight. You know, this is the, always the same thing that happens, though, is that I listen to you and think to myself, it's going to be the same things. But of course, you can't retain everything that you say. So I do one thing, and I think, oh, yeah, but he mentioned that as well. So as ever, it's been like I've got pages of notes. Excellent. Which, just, which is which really I'll go through. I would say to anybody, if you want to have Phil's presentation, then please email me. Uh, to please do that. I'd also say to you, is that please let's be you know phil has done this genuine an hour and a half of his time which has been phenomenal uh but please give him a recommendation if you like what he says this is what he does he lives and breathes linkedin i'm sure your family think you live in and breathe linkedin but a recommendation a personal recommendation would be absolutely great so lots of thank yous and fantastics but let, let's tell everybody else as well and i think that every time i listen to you i learn something more uh yes the other thing you mentioned was that you have some scripts um, so again, write to me and I'll pass all that on to Phil or write to him directly, whatever you want to do. I really don't mind. So yes, it doesn't make any difference. It's been amazing. Lots and lots of thank yous and thank yous. And everybody's, everybody's busy to have to get off because they've got to do LinkedIn. My pleasure. So, thank you so much. I think the script, I think the scripts are in the ebook at the end of the, the, uh, questionnaire. Okay. All right. Pretty, that's pretty certain. If, they, if they're not, I'll send them anyway. Okay. That's perfect. Well, it's up to everybody here to make contact with me or to Phil directly. If you just want to leave it, then you leave it. But if you actually want to take this on to the next stage, I suggest you get your act together the same way as I'm going to have to rethink it. <laughs> You've got it right. You think it's okay. And then you listen to Phil and then you think, oh, I didn't do that bit, did I? <laughs> so it's, uh, but you do, this is what you do for a living though, Phil, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So therefore, we're, and we're stress consultants, so therefore we have to, <laughs> we do our bit and you do your bit. Um, I, 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 would, I would imagine you're going to be very busy over the next few months. We are pretty busy at the moment, is, but nevertheless, what you, well, I think what I like about the way you speak is it's all about engagement. It's all about people. It's all about personalizing it. Lovely thing when you said, would you go into the shop without saying to somebody, thank you for coming? Yeah. Um, you know, it's yeah. all those little things that we all think this is techie techie and you're taking that out of it. You're using the technology, but you're making it personal, engaging, and you're bringing in the human angle. And it's not just, yes, scripts help. And of course they do. Cut and paste helps, but to tweak everything and to make sure it, it works for that individual. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, really, that was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. On behalf of ISMA, thank you very much.